Hi, I'm Artem, and today we are going to talk to about uh, about the amount of data which is produced uh, in the backend from Kamunda and uh, what we uh, experienced in in last years uh, dealing with with uh, Kamunda. So. Um, here are the topics which we are going to discuss today. Um, just a short overview of what, what we are doing in Magenta Telecom. Then we will talk about the amount of data which, are, which we are producing. Then uh, it will be a short overview of what we tried to do with it. And uh, then I will explain you what we actually, uh, what we actually uh, developed to keep the database and Kamunda running smoothly and, and uh, without any performance issues. Just a um, few facts about the uh, Magenta Telecom uh, and what we are doing in Magenta Telecom with uh, Kamunda. So as of today, we have uh, 200 uh, business process definitions running in production. And um, uh, these definitions are covering our um, most business cases like customer activation, prepaid bulk activation, product change, change MSSD and change SIM card, and so on. So, and some uh, of uh, business processes which are, I'm sorry, which are concerning to the contract, contract termination, prolongation, and, and so on. But the most interesting thing about all these business processes which we have defined and which are running is that we are keeping track of each and every process and sub-process and each activity which is, which is running. So, and as you can imagine, we produce a lot of data. So the database is dealing with millions of records daily. So here are the database figures which we have. Um, imagine we have uh, 500,000 root process instances per month, and this results in around 3.5 million process instances at all in one month. So this means that um, and, and, and each of the instance inserts around 90 records in the database. So Kamunda has around 19 or 70, 70, 70 or 18 historical tables, so where, where the Kamunda stores the historical data. And in one month, we are inserting around 300 million records in the database. Um, what does it mean? First of all, we are consuming a lot of storage. Um, as you can see, it's about half, a, half of a terabyte per month. And in one year, if you are not doing anything about this data, which are stored in historical tables, you are coming to six terabytes of data hold, uh, stored in, on, in, on the tables. And um, when we started to heavily use Kamunda in uh, 2000, let's say 17, it was like the cockpit, the Kamunda cockpit performance was so much bad because of this kind of huge amount of data. So it was like six terabytes for one year, and we, we, were, we were keeping two years. And imagine, so you have a table. The table has hundreds of millions of records. And then Kamunda cockpit is not able to deal with it. All right. Then we um, thought about, OK, what, what, what can we do? 
So the, the first and uh, the first and emergency solution was to switch the database scheme. So you de you de you define the, the database scheme, which is equal to the one which is running in production, and from one day you are switching Kamunda to use the new database scheme. Okay, solution, yes. Performance on the cockpit for a new data, okay, good. Maybe even perfect. But the disadvantage of this solution was that, first of all, you have to switch always, always Kamunda cockpit from one instance to another instance. So if you want to uh, look to the old data, you need to switch it, run, look. And if you want to get to the new data, you need to, again, switch the Kamunda cockpit to work with a new database instance. Not a perfect solution, but it, it was working. Um, the another disadvantage of this, so you have to keep one, uh, so your old data, and, and, the, and, and it consumes storage, and storage is always not cheap. Uh, and um, yeah, and, and, and the new instance still producing data. Okay? So after this so, uh, situation, we decided, okay, we need to write some kind of housekeeping program, which will be uh, deleting data, maybe day by day, maybe once, month by month, from the uh, historical tables, and to keep the performance stable, to keep the storage more or less not growing. And so we started with a simple. We decided, okay, we will be going to uh, find the completed process instances, let's say, which, are, which were completed in, in one month. Then we will be just going table by table and deleting these records. So you can find by process instance, you can find the whole hierarchy and issue a delete statement. Simple, straightforward, but not performant. And uh, just keep in mind that we have a system online and it is running day and night. We cannot afford us um, a kind of maintenance window for two hours a month or, or a week. That's why we decided, okay, the system is running. We are going to delete data. Simple delete, delete, go. But we tried to delete one month. And, and it was about 120,000 process instances in one month. And it was running like 24 hours. And it was not acceptable anyhow. Okay, the next solution, maybe we had to think about more sophisticated. We decided, okay, the simple, straightforward delete in serial does not help us. We were thinking, okay, Oracle provides a kind of bulk processing. You are issuing one statement, and then you can go uh, by row IDs and delete the data. The principle is the same. You are, you are looking for a kind of uh, period of time which you want to delete. Let's say one day or one week. You are storing your process instance IDs in the index organizer tables, and then you are going table by table, issuing for bulk, for, for all statement, using row ID in the uh, predicate, and you are almost done. And you also can do it in, in the parallel. So you can define a function which will be running in parallel, issuing four, four let's say four or 10, or what's, what is your parallel degree and your system allows. So we tried it this one. 
the performance was better than the, from the first one, but still not not that pleasant like uh, like it could be. Just a second. All right. Um, so the, sim the, the issuing a DML statement to the tables, which have a, a lot of data, is not performant. And then we asked uh, Kamunda if we, if we can somehow partition these historical tables, but we had to have a key, a partitioning key, which is, which is, which will be telling us, okay, this is how we can partition historical tables, and then we can easily and smoothly just drop partition by partition, and this how we will get rid out of the historical data. So, or uh, Kamuda has. Uh, had a workshop with us, and, and they then introduced in version 7.10, they have introduced a removal time field. And removal time field is the uh, time to leave uh, property of each process definition, where you can say um, the process is going to be completed, let's say, in 60 days. And this data is propagated over the whole hierarchy and never changed. So this, this is cannot, uh, exactly what you want. When you start your process, the, the data is written into the removal time field, and then you, you can rely on, the, on, on, on this value. Perfect. Then, uh, and this is exactly the key which has allowed us to create this uh, housekeeping solution. Um, prerequisites uh, for all of you who is using Oracle, you have to have a license with a partitioning option. Um, and if you have it, then, then you are almost done. Good. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned, um, sorry, Kamunda PPM version 7.10, Oracle Enterprise Edition, from the version 12.1 with partition options, then you ha have to define the time to leave uh, value, and, and then you need to do the partitioning of the historical tables. How we did it? So here, you, here is the example of the eight uh, ACT binary table. This is the most uh, biggest table in the Kamunda for, for today. So we have a silo here, and um, we have also, here is the removal time. This is what comes with, with the version 7.10. What we did, we defined uh, partitioning by range based on the removal time key. So in this example, we define it like uh, every seven days, like a weekly partitions. Then we decided to uh, create a default partition with uh, which will be holding all the data which is not having a real, real time, uh, removal time value because pro uh, business process definitions, for example, do not have removal time, but they are still stored in the ACTG byte array table. So you have to somehow keep this data and uh, you, you should be able to insert it. So we define it default value for this field. We define it uh, default partition for the for the data which without removal time, and we enabled uh, a row movement option. So row movement option in Oracle allows you to move the data between partitions as soon as you change the partitioning key, and this is important. Second. We define it uh, indexes. Um, indexes were so um, um, historical tables have uh, unique indexes like a primary key, 
and non-unique indexes. Primary key was left without uh, change. The uh, non-unique indexes were created like a local. And we also define it a trigger, which is guarantee, which uh, guarantee us that the removal time will be always populated. Because if the, if the removal time will, is not populated, then Oracle does not allow you to insert. So, and 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 we faced out that that uh, that the Camunda itself not always writes this removal time value. That's why we had to have a trigger in that case. Good. And now comes to the housekeeping itself. Um, sorry. Imagine you have uh, weekly partitions. So you see it here that the partition uh, under the row number one is with high value from 23rd of August. The next one is coming from 30th of August and so on and so on. So weekly partitions. And then you can see, you can gather statistics like uh, with a small program, how many pro process instances are completed and how many processes are not completed. And then you can decide, okay, can I, uh, what should I do with, with this not completed process instances? Because if, it's, uh, if, the, if the amount of not completed processes is high, then like, like in this example, then you uh, will be dealing with um, a lot of movements which Oracle will do if you will be going to, to update this removal time field. So uh, for partition number under, under row num, uh, one, we have just 115 not completed partition, uh, com process instances, and we decide, okay, we can move. So, and how, we, how do we move? We just update the uh, removal time value. So first we, we, uh, we find uh, first we, we look for, for the uh, process instances which we for the partition which we are going to be dropped. Then we find the non-completed instances. Then we move the, uh, then we store the process instance IDs in the uh, index organizer table. Then we uh, update the removal time field with, uh, with the next day or the next value which we dec decided. Let's say we can move the non-completed process instances for, for one week. So the, the removal time will be updated uh, today, uh, the removal time plus, plus one week. Then we are running a, again a check which guarantees us that we that the partition which we are going to drop is clear and we will not be dropping something which is not belonging to this partition. And at the end, we are issuing just an alter table drop partition. The update indexes option is uh, important because um, otherwise you will be damaging uh, unique indexes and but the update indexes option is allowing you to do it without any um, <coughs> without any um, bad things which will so it it, it will not uh, un invalidate the index and so the system will be running like like before and in this case you have uh, let's say you uh, you are running your system the system has a time to leave defined uh, like for 60 days. And so this is your f almost the latest one partition, but you are going to drop this one. So in this case, your system is writing to the partition which is not yet listed here, but you are dealing with this partition and you are just issuing drop by drop and then your data is gone. So here is just an overview of the uh, solution which we, which I just described.
And yeah, this is how it works. Uh, as to the advantages, you are not issuing the emails, which is perfect. You are achieving a lot of faster cleanup, but you cannot compare the cleanup uh, using drop and using delete. But still, you are coming to, to what you wanted. And uh, yeah, you are using advantages of the partitions. Um, yeah, so this is what we de de developed. Thank you.